A linear inequality is one that we can get from a linear equation by changing the equals symbol into an inequality symbol. So every linear equation has a graph that is a straight line like we've seen when we're drawing the boundary line as well. It was linear. The graph of a linear inequality like we've seen is what? It's a half plane. Sometimes including the line along the edge, along the boundary. So the two cases that we graphed last, we could, didn't include the boundary line because we didn't have the equality case underneath our inequality. So just to sum up what we're doing when we're graphing an inequality in two variables. We replace the inequality with an equality sign and graph the related linear equation. So that just says switch the inequality with an equals, graph the boundary line. If the inequality symbol is less than or greater than, we draw the line how? Dashed. If the inequality symbol is less than or equal to or greater than or equal to, we draw the line solid. We have that option to include the boundary. Then we just choose a test point, not on the boundary line. If the point is a solution, we shade that half plane. If it's not, we shade the other. So we've seen cases where we've already had our inequality have y isolated, but we're going to see cases where it might be in standard form. Like the first example, we want to graph this inequality but it doesn't tell us right off the bat where the line intercept and what the slope is to be able to start graphing the boundary line. So, first of all, we need to um, make it an equality case. So, one, first thing we want to do, make it an equal sign. So, we can either plug in um, x and y being zero and find the intercepts and graph it that way, or we can solve y equals blah, blah, blah. I personally like to have it in the slope-intercept form, and I think it's good practice for us anyway. So if I want y on its own, what do I need to do? Subtract 5x from both sides, divide by minus 2, so y equals 5 halves x minus 5. So this is our boundary line going through y-intercept 0 minus 5, rising 5, running 2 from there. And we have to determine, is it going to be solid or is it going to be dashed? So looking back at our original inequality, we're going to have a dashed line, since we can't include the points on the boundary. So let's go ahead and graph, and then we'll choose a test point. So my line is going through 0, minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And from there, I move according to my slope up 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 2, 1, 2. We hit both of the intercepts. So if we chose to go the intercept route, here's where they are. And moving again up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, over 1, 2. And it is dashed. Get out your straight edge, it'll look prettier than mine. Alright. Now, we can choose a test point on either side um, of this boundary, it just can't be exactly on the boundary. Still the same problem, but the computer decided to crap out on me, so sorry the rest of it is gone, but still the same picture drawn. We have that dashed boundary line. We were trying to determine what is a good test point to choose um, to test either the upper half plane or the lower half plane. So in this case, really easy point to plug in, zero, zero. I like plugging in zeros, generally. Easiest route to go, and it's not on the boundary. So, third in our list, we want to test and determine if 0, 0 is in our solution set or not. So, when we plug in those values for x and y, we get 0 is less than 10, which is true. So, that tells me I need to shade and include that point, so anything in the upper half plane. All right. Second one, how is he different than what we've seen so far? Now I have that equality case given, where before we've just dealt with the inequalities. So that's going to change what our line looks like. We can include the boundary. 
So let's actually figure out what is the boundary line looking like. So I need to exchange my inequality for an equality case. We'll solve for y. 3y is minus 2x plus 6. Divide by 3. y is minus 2 thirds x plus 2. And again, like we've just decided, solid or dash line in this case, it's going to be solid. We can include the boundary. So let's graph that line. It goes through 0, 2. From there, I move according to my slope. Down 2 over 1, 2, 3. Down 2 over 1, 2, 3. Or what else can we have done? Up 2, back 1, 2, 3. It's solid. And your straight edge will help. Hopefully, I hope your picture will look better than mine. And we want to determine what plane, what half plane, excuse me, is a part of our solution set. So again, really easy test point to plug in. Zero, zero. Since it's not on the boundary line and it's in one of the planes. Into the original inequality, what are we looking at? So zero is less than or equal to six which is true. So we need to include the lower half plane. All right. So two for you to try. Graph those two inequalities. So first example, we want to exchange the inequality for equality. And we want to solve for y. We want it in that slope intercept form so we can graph the boundary line easily. So let's solve for y. We need to subtract 3x from both sides, divide by negative 5 everywhere. So y is equal to 3 fifths x minus 3. So we can graph the boundary, but is it going to be solid or dashed? And why? It's going to be dashed because we can't include the boundary line. We don't have the equality case. So let's draw boundary line. Go through 0, minus, 1, 2, 3. From there, I move according to my slope, up 3, over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Up 3, over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this is dashed. And again, we need to cho choose a test point in one of the half planes. Easiest one to plug in, 0, 0. Let's test. Into the original inequality, not the equality case, that's not going to help us because we already know we can't plug in things on the boundary line. So what are we getting? Into our original inequality, 0 is less than 15, which is true. So that tells me we need to shade the upper half plane. All right. Last one for you, again exchanging the inequality for the equality case. Before we start drawing though, is it going to be solid or is it going to be dashed? It's going to be solid. We can include the boundary line. And what kind of line am I looking at? Is it going to be horizontal or a vertical line at 4? So what variable is involved? Y. So we're going to need a Y intercept. So in order to cross the y-axis, what kind of line do we have to be looking at? Horizontal. So we have a horizontal line at 1, 2, 3, 4, and it's solid, so we can include on the boundary. And any test point you want to choose in particular? I like the origin. Let's see, 0, 0. If we plug it in, I don't have any uh, x variables, so that doesn't matter. We just need the y-coordinate. Is 0 less than or equal to 4? Yes. So that tells me we need to shade the lower half plane. The very last example is similar to the previous, but now we're dealing with um, the x variable instead of y. So first thing we want to do is switch to the equality case to graph the boundary line. And is that boundary line going to be solid or dashed? It's going to be dashed. Since we can't include points on the boundary, and is it going to be a vertical or a horizontal line at 3. So we have an x variable involved. We're going to have an x-intercept, which means I need to cross this axis. So I'm looking at vertical at x equal to 3, and it is dashed. 
Next, we want to choose test point. Any test point in particular that you want to try? I like this one. Again, we don't have any y coordinates in our original inequality. We only care about the x. So let's try. Let's test. Is 0 less than 3? Yes. So I need to shade the left half plane that includes the origin. So when we were graphing before, just with lines, we have infinitely many solutions, but it has to lie right on that line. Now when we're dealing with inequalities, the line is questionable, just depending on the inequality, if we can include or not include those points. And now we have infinitely many in an entire plane that we can include in our solution set.